Hello and welcome back to the Movie Memo Recaps. Today we're going to recap a 2019 movie titled Runt. Please be advised that there might be spoilers ahead. The movie begins in Cal's bedroom, showing images of her crush Gabby. Cal and his dog move in response to the alarm clock's buzz. He goes through his typical morning routine, bathes, feeds his dog, and prepares a snack for school. His dog grabs a condom from his backpack, resulting in a struggle to free it from its jaws. He takes off for school, leaving Runt in the yard, surrounded by a fence. Once at school, he discovers that some boys have pranked him. Cal tries to pick up a coin from the floor, but it's stuck tightly. Cecily tells him about the glued penny, but Ronnie shoves him to the floor with his foot. Cecily pulls him up, and despite his anger, he stomps away, but the condom slips out of his backpack. Cecily takes it and hides it in her palms. She also kicks the coin, putting an end to everyone's amusement. A test is currently being administered in Cal's class. Hank, sitting behind Cal, attempts to copy from him, but Cal refuses to let him or Hank's friend do so. Nevertheless, he teases Cal and instructs him to lean back. Mr. Tally, the teacher, is considering whether Cal let those boys to cheat him and tells Cal that failure awaits if he remains silent. A girl in Cal's new class has his attention. He keeps a drawing of her in his room and draws another one in his notebook. When the class divides into groups, he joins the one that includes his crush. He tries to get Gabby's attention, but she's shy around him. During lunch at the cafeteria, he shows his friend Borgi the sketch of Gabby. His friend enjoys the work, but warns against presenting it to Gabby because she is dating Vic. But Cal argues that Gabby is unusual telling the story of how his father won his mother's heart by penning her a song. In the following lesson, everyone is drawing. Cal's instructor finds a letter on his desk and pats him on the back for getting into UCLA. However, Cal mentions that he is more interested in Rhodes Island. Cecily takes back his condom and considers inviting him to the homecoming dance, when Borgi interrupts with a question. Why is she labeled a homeschooler? His timing with the question coincides with the bell ruining the moment for Cecily. Around midday, Cal approaches Gabby and her pals, hoping to spend some alone time with her. He's holding the image he created of her, asking whether she's going to the homecoming dance, but she dismisses it, saying no one goes there. She walks by him. Cal sees her backpack is open and slides the drawing inside. He's ready to unlock his bike and ride home, when Vic and his gang steal it. Vic tells him that Mr. Tally threw out Paul's papers because they cheated on the quiz. Cal categorically denies ratting them out to Tally. Vic points out that if his buddies are penalized, they would miss the following match, which would be a setback for the squad. Cal is dragged along as they ride his bike to the top stairs of the football field. Vic wants Cal to persuade Tally that his friends were not cheating. The forthcoming encounter is significant for them. Cal doesn't appear disturbed. The trio shoves him into a barrel-like trash bin and sends him crashing down the steps. He gets on his bike and heads home. He's tired and hurting, but he still manages to play fetch with his dog. He picks up his baseball bat and begins hitting balls, which Runt eagerly chases down. Cal's mother comes home at night. She closes her bedroom door to signify her fatigue. The following school day, Principal Carrie summons Cal to her office informing him that a staff member witnessed those boys manhandling him. Vic and the football coach enter the office at the same time. Vic shows the principal Gabby's sketch, claiming that Cal has been stalking his girlfriend. As the principal turns to Cal, he chooses to smooth things over by claiming nothing happened on the football field. Cecily approaches Cal after school and suggests going to the library for a smoke. She also offers an invitation to the homecoming dance. He claims that no one attends those, but she responds that people don't go there to dance, implying a different purpose. He goes to his part-time job in a store. Once finished, he cycles to the library to join Cecily for a smoke. She asks for a ride home. They bike together, but tumble near her house. He notices and appreciates her legs and proposes she drop the long skirt since they are beautiful. She recognizes her understanding and enters her home. Cal returns home, gathers his belongings, and retires to his room for some relaxation. The next day, 
Kel finds himself in the same study group with Gabby once again. She tells him she admired his sketch, but Vic saw it and freaked out. She also notes Vic having the house to himself this weekend, and she invites Cal to the party. Gabby encourages him to come, demonstrating to Vic that he is unconcerned about what has transpired. Bordy and Cal head to a remote location with a firearm in tow. They practice firing at targets. Borgie tries to get Cal to attend the party Gabby invited him to. Cal initially objects to the proposal because it is at Vic's house, but after some deliberation, he agrees. They both head to the party. A sizable portion of the audience is indulging in drugs and booze. Cecily walks up at the party and connects with Cal. Borgie makes a fool of himself, leading Cecily and Cal to get some fresh air. They go outside. Vic and his friends spot them and begin to harass them. Vic despises Cal and wonders what he would do if he messed with his girlfriend. They push Cal into the trunk of his car. Hank holds Cecily back, and that's when Gabby pushes Vic aside. Cecily refuses to talk to anyone and hurries away. Cal and Borgie catch up the next day. Borgie feels awful about not being there for Cal, but Cal believes that even if he was, he would have done nothing. They rib each other a little. Borgie believes they keep picking on him because they don't take him seriously. Cal points out that Borgie was the actual humor of the party. Their discussion heats up, and they part ways. Cal cannot find Cecily at school. Gabby hands him a message, which he declines to read. He discovers that his bike chain has been severed, and he must race to work. When he arrives at work, his boss fires him for being late for the third time. He calls his mother for a ride but receives no answer. He left a hoof at home while hauling his bicycle. He gets home and checks on his mother, who is out cold. Cal enraged steals his mother's car, with Runt hopping in. He drives over to Vic's house, prepared to revenge, and torches Vic's car. Vic and Hank rush out of the house, contacting the police. Hank gets a good glimpse at Cal's car and Runt as they speed away. Cal is skipping school the next day. He had a brief, meaningless conversation with his mother. He fixes his bike and rides with Runt to Cecily's house. Her father answers the door. Cal inquires about Cecily, and her father replies that she is out, unaware of the recent happenings. They proceed to the library and wait for Cecily for a while. Hank is on the road with a friend when he sees Cal and Runt. I knew it, he mutters, connecting the dots as he spots Runt. Cal grabs Runt, and they duck out of sight. Hank and his friends search for him but come up empty. Cal visits a gun store and considers purchasing a firearm. Cecily contacts Cal, and the two meet that night. He asks if she intends to report Vic's attack to the cops. She opts out for two reasons. For starters, her father is on probation and finding out what happened would enrage him and throw him in jail again. Second, Cal has been accused of torching Vic's car, and if this rumor spreads, it will jeopardize his future possibilities. She tells him to be cautious if he's going to school the next day. Cal arrives at school and sees Borgie, who apologizes for everything and reveals that he snipped Cal's bike chain during a fit. But he's got his back now, sensing an escalation. Cal evades Vic and his pals all day, but they eventually catch up with him. A fight breaks out, but Cal holds his own, employing the iron fist he plainly purchased, as well as some sneaky tactics. Teacher Tally intervenes, breaking up the melee. Cal walks home with a delighted look on his face. Ronnie and his team stop him, admiring his bold approach. They load him into their jeep and chant mad men in his honor. They provide a ride home while also inviting him to bowl later. They hit the lanes, exchanging giggles and strikes. Ronnie tells a story about his father, who poisoned his belongings with something to teach him a lesson, but it backfired and plagued him for six months. He extends an invitation to the after-party to Cal, who declines. Cal dials Cecily to see what she's up to. When Cal returns, she and Runt are waiting for him at his doorstep. He tells her about his night, and she becomes inquisitive about Runt. Cal explains that Runt was a roaming dog. He tracked him down and brought him in. As they walk inside, he's nervous about confronting Flack, but she calms him down by stating that everyone blames Vic for the brawl. They embrace and settle down for a movie. Runt complains, feeling left out. 
Cal takes Rund outdoors and explains that he gets jealous when he is disregarded. That night, Cal and Cecily share a bed. When morning arrives, she compliments his neck for many reasons. They also review a letter that has arrived for him. It is from Rhodesia. Cal's application is rejected, but he brushes it off. They stroll outside, exchange a sweet kiss, and Cecily departs. Cal searches for Runt but finds no trace. He finds some blood tracks and follows them. He's devastated to see Runt's lifeless body in a dumpster. His mind is fixated on it. At school, he clashes with Vic, who claims innocence. They clashed again during a school function. Vic whimpers, as Runt used to, and Cal pieces it together vowing cold revenge. He waits till the big football game. Vic is sidelined due to a hand injury. The squad has fallen into a rut, and morale is low. Cal slips into their locker area and discovers their cash. He saturates it with a harsh chemical cleaning, causing the negative effects Ronnie described. The players take the poison items. Chaos ensues. They bleed and experience severe headaches. Meanwhile, Cecily and Borgie know something is wrong and begin searching for Cal. Cal corners Vic and plays mind games. He gets into him, guilt-tripping him before delivering punches with his baseball bat. Vic wrestles the bat away, but Borgie rushes in with a gun in hand and fires a warning shot. Cal seizes the gun and bat, ordering Borgie to flee or face the consequences. He's prepared to make Vic pay. Cecily tracks them down and stops Cal from pulling the trigger. She hands him the bat instead, suggesting an alternative way to settle the score. Cal scores two strong hits on Vic. Cecily comes in and calls it even. They put down the bat and a gun, and prepare to face whatever comes next together, bringing the movie to the end. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to see more videos like this.